MDC TV celebrates Black History Month. Remembering Rasan Roland Kirk. It's like seeing something that you ain't never seen in your life, and you don't have to see it, but you know how it looks. Rasan Roland Kirk. Marked and scored by the summer lion, when Mother Moon distributed her nocturnal light from Libra's golden scales to the bark scorpion in a raucous explorer's town at the confluence of the rivers Skioto and Olentangi, Ronald Theodore Kirk, a dreamer, was born. Called forth from a recurring dream, he knew the delight of being and gloried in the delight of becoming was a multiplicity, awake and aware, in the inconscience of flesh, knowing that the only thing in life that cannot be changed is the day one comes to earth and the time one must leave, that everything else can be altered with proper sacrifice. Made Ebo at two, offering his physical eyes that he might often look without distortion into the right moments of the sacred, his dream, and remember the universe's birthing with sights and sounds. The spectacular light show, the original primordial creative sound heard in the musical name of God, in the vital transformational melodies that shift and change the created and preserved. And remembering that he was there, making a sonic bridge between dimensions, opening the way for contact with higher realms and beings, the same who urged him in his dream to remember who he is, to change his name, first from Ronald to Roland, and later to Rasan, who reminded him that he himself set the numerical ratios that determine concordant intervals of the scale, fixed the primary intervals, octave, fourth, and fifth, out of which any musical scale, composition, or cosmos might be built. He embodied a sense of attunement, was adept at fitting together order and chaos, permitting dissonance and consonance to embrace, creating harmony. He came ready, and he came to play. Whether cornet, clarinet, sax or flute, manzello, stritch, whistle, or siren, even a water hose. The entire continuum of black classical music, easily mixing and matching genres with circular breathing, playing several horns at once, betraying technique no improvising saxophonist has ever possessed. He had the hippest chops of them all, playing at the end of his days one-handed better than most could play but two. Unlike Charon, who place conditionalities on the souls who came to their one more river to cross. Rasan never extorted, never left any of us to wander in the aimless on the beaches of improvisation. For he was not a ferryman to the dead or a pathetic, but a journey agent for those lively up yourselves who yearn for something more. He never failed to take us from respective points of departure however empty or desolate, to the upper limits of intensity, to points of ejaculatory inevitability before exploding into heretofore uncharted planes of rapture, musical euphoria, making those of us who knew him and all of us with ears and hearts who dug him, Eulipians. <laughs> 